everybody would be obligated to dance at least one time a week. Because dancing, I feel like, just frees the soul. You just feel so much better after. Um, you have to do it. What up? My name is Leslie Santos. I am born and raised in Los Angeles, California, North Hollywood to be exact, okay? I am a DJ and radio host on Real 92.3 here in Los Angeles. Empowerment to me means being your true self always 100% and, and loving who you are. When I hit 14 years old, I think I just, I hit the point where it was like I was thinking about it so much that I had to finally just free myself. Um, but it was hard, it wasn't easy. It was like the first thing on my mind every single day. You know, I realized at such a young age that I had, to, in order to be, to be free, I had to actually live my truth. And, and I had to do it for me, no one else. And I think for a long time, that's what held me back from living my truth is I was too busy thinking about everyone else and I put myself last. And you know, now that I'm an adult and I'm a lot older, um, I, I live my life the same way. I'm no good to anyone else if I can't be true to myself. Word got out that I was, you know, gay, and I couldn't believe how accepting people were. Not only were they so accepting, I feel like I kind of inspired other girls that were also feeling the same way to come out and, you know, I guess maybe experiment with how they felt and like actually like let themselves be free. And I carried that on with me forever. Like I, I, I realized like, you never know who you're inspiring when you're living your truth. You have to, you have to live your truth. You have to um, accept who you are and don't be ashamed. And there's a lot of love on the other side waiting for you. It was a long road because I remember being super young, like in the first grade and like I struggled with like wanting to look like a boy, right? And it was, I wanted to look that way because I felt like I wanted people to see me that way, you know? Um, and then when I got a little bit older into like junior high school, I was like, okay, I'm ready to finally dress like a girl. When I was in elementary school, I wanted to dress like a boy. And then I was like, okay, if I want people to accept me, I need to dress like a girl. So when I got into junior, junior high school, that's what I started to do. And now I'm an adult and I dress like a boy again. God damn it. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what you wear. Like it's how you carry yourself. It's how you feel about yourself. And it's how you make other people feel. You know, identity and who I am, um, I feel like I've dealt with that my entire life at like a young age, right? I, I, I've i always kind of tried to feel like, I've always felt like this is who I am, but I'm trying to please other people, so I'm, I'm gonna be this person. And it wasn't until I was older where I realized like it doesn't really matter. Self-love, I mean, listen, this is me. I, I can't change who I am. And I think I realized um, at like an older age that, you know, um, we're all different in our own special way. You know, I've learned to just like write down things that like I'm grateful for. How do I get to a place of self-love? I'll be honest with you. I, I do things that are good for my soul. Like I work out every day. I, I try to eat as healthy as I can. I write down at least five things that I'm grateful for every single morning. Um, I, I mean, I do that before I even get out of bed. Um, and then I carry on with working out, eating healthy, um, you know, words of affirmation for that day, for that week, goals that I'm going to try to achieve. And I also remember to not be too hard on myself and just remind myself that you're doing the best that you can. I love myself because I'm the most important person to myself. And if I'm not good to myself, I'm not good to other people. I'm Mexican, but my stepdad's from El Salvador. So I feel like I, I, had, I had it tough coming out. I mean, my family was definitely the hardest to come out to. My stepdad was the hardest. You know, he made it very clear very early on that he was not okay with that lifestyle. Um, but, you know, I, I pushed through and I, I stayed true to myself. And now as an adult, like I've had him come to me and tell me like, hey, I am sorry for the way that I treated you when you were, you know, going through all of this. I should have been better. You know, I should have been more understanding. And one of the things that he said that stood out to me was like, I'm happy that you stayed true to who you've always been. 
And that I was like, oof. Well, you know, I think that um, we've definitely made a lot of progress within the Hispanic community and the LGBT com community. I, I think so anyway, like from what I see with my friends, you know, their, their, their families are a lot more accepting, but we're not, we're not quite there yet, you know? And I mean, I think, I think, I think we just have to keep trying to educate each other as much as we can and, and keep open minds and just remember that like we're all different and we're all special in our own way. To me, happiness is uh, being true to myself, being comfortable, and sometimes it can be hard to be comfortable with myself, but I think just reminding myself that like I'm here for a reason. It's waking up with a purpose, um, you know, remembering who I am and why I'm here. And, you know, happiness to me is to keep dreaming and to keep, you know, working to achieve all of the goals that I've ever wanted to achieve, whether it be, you know, working in music, working with radio, um, being the best sister, daughter, you know, Thea that I can be. Um, that is happiness. Thank you, Shoe Palace and Adidas, for letting me share my story.